So welcome back to the closing session of Water and Beyond. Uh, if you have missed a few moments uh, over these last four days, a lot of talk, a lot of different voices from all different uh, sectors. Uh, so we do want to do kind of a sum up right now. The key takeaways uh, from this event before we then go to a final panel discussion and then closing comments followed by more networking. A last half hour, if you missed out on the networking, you've got another half hour left to do that at the end uh, of the closing session. Um, key takeaways uh, from Arnaud de Vancé. Arnaud, you are team leader for Water, Environment, Sustainable, Natural Resources Unit at DG. Now it's called INTPA. Used to be DG DEVCO, now it's INTPA. Yes. Because it's all about partnerships. And what did then. you see over these uh, last four days uh, that encourage you that there is consensus for more partnership? Yeah, I think we do have indeed a consensus, a consensus on the situation. And this consensus is already very important to can build after. But let's quote a bit what we have heard during these days. I yeah, think it's, it's quite interesting. Good to get a few sound bites, right, over yeah, the days. Exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> the first quote we can we can come with from Katarina Bukerke, this she's so engaged for sanitation and water. And she put forward it very simply. It is basic. Water security and access to water are necessary to achieve all the goals of the SDG agenda. But then after, we heard also different other, other sound bites, like uh, the member of the European Parliament, Krisula Zakaropoulou, that said that access to water is together else, a right, and dignity. Mm. And then we went to other territories like <coughs> like uh, water transboundary water management and diplomacy. And Dominic Porter from the AS explained that, as Leonardo da Vinci said, water is the driving force of all nature. Mm. And many wow. underlined that water is the most the most strategic resources from our societies and for the 21st century. Water is the only natural resource that has no substitute. The only substitute to water is water, said the State Secretary Stanislav Rachen. So we see a lot of <coughs> consensus here, and I, I, I love that line from the Member of Parliament about water being a, a question not only of, of infrastructure and, and finance and governance, but it it's, comes down to a question of dignity. I yes. think that's, that's what, as justifying what we talked about today with water being uh, recognized as a human right. And a human right is, does involve dignity, doesn't it? So looking for, where do we go forward now? What uh, sort of signals did you get over these last four days of, of how to move forward? I think our director, Deputy Director General Marietta Jagger gave the tone at the beginning, saying that um, <coughs> that the partnerships are essential there. And then uh, Francisco André gave some concrete examples for Portuguese uh, um, opinion on water partnerships and what. Uh, but let's see more in details what they can mean. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> so. So, for instance, if we go to the uh, to the, the question of transboundary management. Okay. So Dominic Porter explained that water is the driving force of all of 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 na nature, like we heard before. Right. But he said, let's use this force to strengthen peace, international cooperation, working on shared resources can help mitigating conflicts and bring peace. He recalled the example of coal and steel in Europe. Uh, resources that uh, that had to be managed in common, and that, that was the first steps towards what is today the EU. Cannot we do the same mm. with water? I think it has already been the case in the EU, and f for sure, some other regions of the world are doing it. Yeah. Like we have uh, had a very good example on the Lake Chad Commission, mm -hmm. that since 1964 is trying and striving to mitigate conflict, prevent conflicts, and having all the people working together to secure the resources and make sure that prosperity comes for everybody. And, and Olga with UNESCO, that was important to have her, her contribution. What did she say? Yeah, she said that water agreements and joint institutions provide indispensable backbones for effective cooperation, enabling sharing of economic, social, and environmental benefits. So transboundary river ma basin management requires trust, political support, robust basin organizations, strong and coherent governance structures, contemporary management techniques, approaches, and tools. And the Water uh, Convention, I think, was very much at issue here, wasn't it? Yes, it was It was uh, seen as one of the way to go forward with uh, having a legal framework that helps the country to work together. And it was advocated by um, both our leaders, the Commissioner Lenacic, 
and um, the State Secretary Stanislav Ratchen. And like, like Chad mm. was an example of that, wasn't it? Yes, indeed, yeah. Mm -hmm. As we just said, um, and I think uh, what is important, uh, th this was all perfectly summed up by a brilliant contraction from State Secretary Ratchen. The EU can lead the transition by combining diplomacy, policy, and cooperation. Panelists emphasize the importance of integrated approaches linking water management and conflict pre prevention, the support for water cooperation across borders and communities. So the interlinkages should not be neglected, as it proved to be very costly for the environment, societies, and economies, as Ambassador Peter Borian explained for Central Asia. <coughs> and as we mentioned about uh, water being a human right, what did we learn about that during this uh, this this uh, co uh, this uh, conference? Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Lenachit indicated that now it is the time to reflect collectively on how to translate human rights and sanitation obligations to meaningful actions on the ground. We were reminded by various patterns that there are EU guidelines on the human rights <coughs> for safe drinking water and sanitation. They give a clear way forward with the core elements of availability, accessibility, quality, affordability, and acceptability. They also underline how partnerships could look like there is a need to support the implementation of uh, these guidelines, but also to accompany them with technical assistance so that they can be understood and so that they can be implemented. And we had, a, we had an example of that with Nepal, didn't we? Yeah, in Nepal, for instance, they, they promoted the, the principle of participation that is a fundamental principle for Im implementing this, the human right. And they use c community scorecards to assess wash services. Can children and people with disabilities, disabilities use the tap? What about quality of water? Mm -hmm. Is drinking water affordable for everybody? And we also heard from Anna Taylor from UNICEF. Of UNICEF, that's mm. right. Yeah. There is solid evidence that WASH in schools, for instance, improves students' health and attendance, in particularly for girls. As we know, during the menstrual periods, there is a huge dropout if the girls do not have access to proper sanitation. UNICEF and WHO have a good working experience and guidelines on how WASH can be included in an education or health partnership. This can easily be taken forward. So it's, it's no surprise that this should be part of the EU gender action plan, right? Yes, exactly. That, that was several, uh, several times mentioned. So yeah. we have the core elements there to move forward. And, th and that's linked to sanitation, of course. Sanitation being an integral part of the discussion over these last four days, because that's sort of a, a concrete example of, of, of water, right? Yes, indeed. And it's not easy always to find a way to finance uh, sanitation. Jennifer Williams from Fecal Sludge Management proposed... <coughs> Another way forward, the focus to date within the she said that the focus to date within the sanitation sector has been looking at regulations on policy, which is why the Fecal Sludge Management Alliance is focusing on the development of industry-driven standards. These standards can really help to move forward at the community and local level, <coughs> and uh, from the municipalities, communities level, together mm -hmm. with small enterprises, for instance, or uh, local operators, to move forward uh, the, the, the sector. And by, by providing a better uh, re regulatory framework that, pr that gives more um, uh, confidence uh, into, uh, into the f for the investment. So that, that's, that's a good example that was given. And, and a very important part, in fact, there was a, a panel discussion on, on the economy, on jobs. I mean, it comes down to that, doesn't it? Not only uh, you know, there in the location where that is, but it, it goes far beyond. It's water and beyond, doesn't it? Yes. Michela Mileto from the UNESCO Web Deputy, <coughs> no, UNESCO Web, sorry, said that 78% of global workforce is related to water. And it is a major produc productive factor. The FAO representative recalled us that we could provide food without soil, but not without water. Yep. That's striking. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Agriculture is deeply linked to water, and 70% of fresh water use is linked to food production. In Europe, our consumption is translated by use of around 5,000 liters of water per day. In clothes, food, furniture, phones, and more of half of it is linked to the food we consume. The improved production per drop is a must, and partners recall that cooperation programs should take this into consideration and relate it to a broader management of water at basin level. Okay, this brings us to the, the virtual water trading argument. <laughs> yes, Explain uh, that a little bit. <laughs> so basically, <laughs> when we are consuming, we are importing water through our clothes, through our food, through everything that we are using, even the wood <laughs> or even the gold that we have in our 
little devices there that as much water is used to clean the gold. <clears throat> it's almost like water is an externality linked to all different kinds of activities. Yes, right? and to trade. So yeah. what what are the impacts on the communities? What are the impacts on the vulnerable population? So there is a question mark there. Where 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 we, should we go with this virtual trade? And the finance gap, hundred bill. As uh, the commissioner said at the very at the kickoff of these four days, he was talking about a hundred billion uh, euro gap every year in, in investing in water. And and have we gotten any closer? We're going to talk about that also in this next panel, the the closing panel. How do you close that gap? Okay, I think we got a number of interesting hints on that during this uh, uh, couple of days. So Annelise April, the vice president of the Suez Group say that we need to combine governance and regulations <coughs> together with skills and finance. So in a partnership approach, and she underlines very strongly the need of this partnership approach. And Celine Robert underlined one way to implement this by combining ODA grants or subsidies for the first two, so for the governance and regulation and skills, together with blind and finance for the third pillar. So <coughs> so that we can move forward. However, Dominique Gattel from Veolia recalled also the importance of the maturity ladder. Mm -hmm. Private sector companies cannot always step in, or different types of private sector according to the type of investments are needed. So we need to first work on the first steps of the maturity ladder because before we can reach certain stages for different types of investment. But we, it's not the only possibility to blended finance. Okay. We have many other possibilities. So Leonard Shankwate <coughs> from Ghana advocated for the use of budget support as a much more efficient and effective tool compared to project support. Maria Pilar Palermo from Burkina Faso highlighted an approach that is combining different approaches, budget support for governance and capacities, cooperation with NGOs for leaving no one behind, and blended finance for investments. So we, we, do, we would work in a partnership to, to build on all of these three principles of governance and regulation, skills, and finance. So it was interesting that we had institutions, NGOs, and the private sector like Veolia uh, to talk to about this. Uh, and Céline Robert with uh, AFD from uh, France will talk a little bit more about that in the next panel uh, on, uh, on how to invest, uh, how to close that finance gap. Um, what about other ways forward in, in developing sources of financing? Okay, one way probably is to work more closely between the private sector and the NGO. The private sector won't be always the solution that fits all contexts we heard. But for instance, water engineers definitely need and can engage with the private sector to shape solutions, build national self-reliance, and build investors' confidence. Yeah, because in, in, in part, the, the NGOs are on the ground, they have the ears on the ground, they have the connections of the people on the ground, and are better able to tailor whatever project it is uh, to the needs of the locality, right? Yeah, and that's an obligation under the human rights framework. Mm. <coughs> mm -hmm. So... <coughs> We also understood, understood that we need to have domestic resource management. So our colleagues from uh, Ben Ampuma from, from Ghana underlined that it's really important to mobilize DRM for, uh, for, for, for the SDG 6. And without that, you cannot move forward. And then you need to in innovate using other types of things like environment bonds that could be, for instance, used perhaps for nature-based solutions. Mm -hmm. Can we use more equity for what uh, small and medium enterprises? Can we leverage funding from foundations? So a number of um, other, um, um, other sources of funding were really uh, highlighted. And we'll come back maybe later on another one that is very important is climate finance. Exactly. And and we only have about two minutes left, unfortunately. Oh. So we got to fast forward here. We're facing a cascading uh, water crisis and trying to develop solutions at the same time. Can we uh, sum that up over the next uh, two minutes? Yes, yes, no problem. Okay. <laughs> some, some suggestions were made to mainstream climate, uh, climate change into water management. The exchange of expertise on the impact of climate change on water, for instance, uh, to have uh, more adaptation actions such as the reuse of wastewater. The European Commission will present, the, so it was also announced that the European Commission will present a new climate adaptation strategy in one month, and that underlines a number of important links that can be harnessed. Mm -hmm. So that's, the next, water that's the next step, climate. right? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. It will acknowledge global need to act together. It will support adaptation solutions that are easier to implement. 
climate change needs to be integrated into water policies and strategies as well as river basin management. We need a partnership for that once again because it's different partners and different types of um, uh, people that are working on that. Okay. <coughs> State Sh Secretary Jean-Rachan was talking about the Team Europe initiative. I think that was a key thing, wasn't it? Yes. Oh, let me come back a little bit on this climate crisis because I okay. think there is one very important point. We have heard from Sylvia from ECLAC that um, <coughs> time is weapon and nature-based solutions cannot be stopped. So we should use them. And so they are going to present very soon a, a very interesting report with more than mm. 200 nature-based solutions for, w for water that will be uh, that can be used in our cooperation. Environment bonds also were presented. The need to tap into climate adaptation funding is really important, and these nature-based solutions can be a way. So Catherine Alburquerque underlined that financing for water and sanitation in climate change adaptation and mitigation remains a challenge since only less than 5% of climate funds are so far used for water, while water is at the heart of most of the climate-related disasters, droughts, floods, storms, uh, sea level rise, etc. So we really, really have something to, 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 to use there. And, uh, and with these nature-based mm -hmm. solutions and climate funding, perhaps our cooperation can, can uh, look for a more leverage. So anyway, any final word on what uh, Slovenia wants to do? Because they are holding the rotating presidency uh, uh, this year. And, and uh, if we can sum up at the end here now about uh, what uh, the next step would be there. Yeah. So we heard from the State Secretary Russia now the Team Europe initiative is a good opportunity to give water the attention it deserves and to promote partnerships together with all um, the, our member states, but also other partners. But now we heard also uh, the minister saying that Slovenia will be striving for <coughs> uh, during its sorry Slovenia during its EU Council presidency will will be striving for embedding water comprehensively across all aspects and facets of EU's external action. We will hear a bit more <laughs> in Slovenia a bit later, but that's quite um, that's interesting. But before we will hear <coughs> about all of that, that <coughs> as Annelise April put it, partnerships are a catalyst to achieve the SDG 6. So what water issues are complex issues. Yes, absolutely. They need these partnerships. We have seen it diplomacy, policy cooperation. We have seen regulations, skills, <coughs> and um, and finance. All these type of partnerships are crucial. So how we can move forward them in the context of our, of our programming, perhaps we will hear a bit more in the next uh, session. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. That's why it's, it, it is more than water. And there are so many livelihoods, benefit sharing, economic growth, peace, food, conflict prevention. They're all linked together on water and beyond. Arnaud Devancé, thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Merci. Let's move on to our last uh, dialogue called How to Promote Water in International Partnerships uh, and in the Current EU Programming. Uh, it looks like where most of us are connected, and I will go first uh, to Pedro Arroyo Agudo. Pedro, I think we talked to you earlier today. Uh, yes, we did. A UN Special Rapporteur on Human Rights to Safe Drinking Water and Sanitation. That's linked to uh, Sustainable Development Goal 6. And my question to you, uh, Pedro, is this, it was recognized that water is a human right 10 years ago. Where are we now? How come we're not further? We have a long way to go, don't we? <laughs> yes, uh, but as I told you before, uh, how many years we have a United Nations uh, under the, 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 the perspective of uh, avoiding all kind of violence, of all kind of war, uh, and while well, we are in the way, uh, I think uh, um, is uh, we have done a, a, a good a good work, even not enough, of course, during ten years now. Um, I remember uh, before the efforts even for being accepted the idea. Mm. And that I have been rejected for defending the, the Declaration of Human Rights to Safe Drinking Water and Sanitation. So uh, the progress is not uh, with, uh, so fast as we, know, as we, we need even, uh, as we would like, but we are in the fight. We are in the, in the way to do it. Okay, let, let me ask you then, uh, you've seen it on the ground, where do you see it working on the ground where you can uh, link this human right to water 
with partnerships, because that's the name of the game over these four days, is to talk about developing partnerships. Where have you seen that work on the ground? Well, of course, uh, I think that the, the, main, the main question uh, is um, deal with, uh, with responsibility. Uh, uh, of course, we, 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 we can gather uh, different uh, alliances and partnership, but in order to, uh, to, 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 to go ahead with the responsibility we have, because it's an obligation. Um, as I said this morning in the introduction to the panel of the human rights to water and sanitation, uh, I believe it is necessary to reflect on the role that we have, uh, we, we must assign to water and sanitation uh, as a very base piece of the public health systems. Uh, at present, in the midst of the, of the pandemic, we claim to reinforce our public health systems with a huge, a huge consensus, both social and political. In fact, the prestige of public uh, health systems is growing as collective democratic efforts uh, without uh, profit making and operating on the principle of leaving no one behind in line with uh, the human rights based approach advocated by the UN. This is the, the key issue. Mm. Uh, and at the same time, the models based on guarantee the health only for those uh, who can afford for it and pay uh, is being degraded and discredited. So uh, on this occasion, uh, unlike the crisis of uh, 2008, fortunately, we, uh, the, the approach to getting out of the crisis has changed radically. Uh, with the austerity strategies, there were not fund public funds. It is one of the main, the key issues that we have debated these days. Now, today, the challenge of facing the pandemic uh, and the relaunching and relaunching the, the European economy and social cohesion with the new Green Deal mobilizes huge public funds. This is the present uh, uh, context. And I think uh, we need to put in the priority agenda of the new Green Deal to reinforce the municipal capacities gravely eroded until a situation of local financial anorexia uh, with the austerity measures in the past. So no. you sound, so Pedro, you sound, you sound optimistic that despite these cascading crises, as we've been discussing, that so this, that the, you, you, you're optimistic that despite these cascading crises, you think that with a Green Deal, uh, that that and this uh, this push uh, for cooperation for partnership, that that we can advance, that we can make water more of a human right for more people. No, because because we are not we are one of the main uh, tasks the main challenge is to uh, to save uh, our clear feeling of vulnerability and the vulnerability is not ever anymore uh, a local uh, even national vulnerability is a global vulnerability so if we uh, uh, against the principle of no leaving one uh, no, uh, leaving no one behind Right. We leave the poorest people behind. We are not sure. We are not safe. So I think it's an obligation, and we are, we agree with this. There is a big consensus on on this approach for the uh, for the um, uh, health public health systems. And I think we are thinking on huge amount of money. There is no gap, mm -hmm. <laughs> financial yeah. gap. For this 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 context, so let's uh, include in uh, as is, is normal is is is, is coherent. Let's include uh, water and sanitation, even if it is a, a municipal obligation or a competence. In, include this obligation and this question uh, on the task of. Uh, uh, public uh, health uh, systems. Pedro, I, I want to don't go away. Stay there. I want to go on to Ben Ampuma, uh, Executive Secretary, Water uh, Resources Commission in in Ghana. Ben, uh, we saw you on panel two. Uh, the, I'm sorry, on uh, on day two, uh, on the panel about water as a catalyst for cooperation, fostering trust and peace. Are you heartened by what you heard during that panel discussion? That we can uh, that we can find new partnerships and move things forward. I'm sure, 
am convinced. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Ben. Oh, you got to turn your mic on. You had your mic on and then you turn it off. Ah, okay, right. There you go. Sorry. It, I, we got you in go stereo now. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so, uh, yeah, how much are you heartened by that discussion on day two about cooperation? Basically, yes, I'm really heartened about that in terms of the advantages that uh, partnership would actually, you know, bring to us with respect to uh, international cooperation. Uh, indeed, we need to achieve the SDGs specifically, and without a doubt, if you don't really have partnerships that are anchored on issues of international principles, standards, and practices, it will be quite difficult to achieve uh, these uh, the SDGs, specifically 6.5 that we are all in, endowed to. Uh, secondly, also, you need partnership with respect to um, how you can really develop programs and projects that you share with your repairing country in an era where we are now we want to promote benefit sharing. Uh, you need all these things, especially in Ghana, for instance, where we want to build water supply projects. We, we depend on our neighbors in terms of socioeconomic and political you know, issues. And also the events that are coming up in terms of water spills, uh, pollution issues are becoming much more of things. And you need to build this kind of trust of uh, you know peace and respect to partnership in order to achieve what about what about uh, ben what about joining the the UNESCO water convention uh, what do you think the benefits are from that oh quite 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 a number of uh, benefits in that respect of course the the the, the convention lays clear the international principles that we need the standards you oh. know, the practices, the norms that we need to follow, and clearly uh, where we're going. Uh, if we really want to have to find, you know, pragmatic solutions, as it were, to address the issues of uh, uh, pollution, to address the issues of developing joint projects, then you need this kind of, uh, uh, you know, a convention like that, that has set the ground rules, so to speak, if like. And uh, for me, that is quite uh, key. Again, I should also mention that for us, one of the key things has to do with uh, data and knowledge management. It's been quite a problem for us. And we need this kinds of tools that have been set up by the convention in order to promote the issues of knowledge management and sharing. Ben, uh, stay where you are. Uh, Céline Robert, uh, si je pourrais parler avec vous, uh, you are head of water and sanitation division at the Agence Française uh, du Développement. Um, on a beaucoup discuté ce, cette question du déficit de, du financement. Uh, D'après toutes ces discussions ces, ces derniers jours ici, uh, quelles sont vos conclusions? Est-ce qu'il y a plus de potentiel de, de fermer ce, ce déficit? Merci. Moi, je, je, je retiens tout d'abord qu'il y a vraiment un enjeu à continuer et à porter plus haut le, le plaidoyer sur l'importance et la transversalité de, de, de l'eau. Et cette conférence y, y, y participe et c'est très bien. Mais, euh, mais on voit bien, et, et monsieur le rapporteur spécial l'a rappelé encore une fois, euh, qu'il y a des financements disponibles pour d'autres sujets. Et donc, la question de la volonté politique à investir dans le secteur de l'eau, elle est, elle est vraiment centrale. Mais euh, euh, en tenant compte de ça, je pense néanmoins, et c'est ce que j'ai retenu, qu'il faut que l'on regarde les difficultés de notre secteur en face, et, et, et je pense que c'est un sujet qui est beaucoup ressorti dans les discussions, qu'un des freins principaux aux investissements, qu'ils soient publics ou privés d'ailleurs, hein, parce que mmh. l'investissement public a, a aussi besoin d'efficacité et de performance, c'est la faible gouvernance du secteur qui empêche justement cette bonne performance et, et, et cet impact euh, sur, sur les populations. Euh, donc, je, je, je pense que pour des institutions comme la mienne et, et comme l'Union européenne, c'est vraiment une priorité. Euh, travailler sur cette gouvernance pour que, permettre à une offre de financement de, de s'exprimer, donc avoir des institutions avec des rôles clairs, avoir une bonne régulation, avoir une planification financière stratégique pour le secteur. Et plus largement, pas seulement pour le secteur de l'eau, mais de manière générale, pour amener le secteur privé à travailler à améliorer l'environnement des affaires 
Mmh. Et je pense aussi qu'il faut travailler sur la demande de, de, de financement en optimisant les coûts. On a vraiment des leviers pour diminuer les besoins en investissement, en améliorant les, les performances techniques et financières, en particulier des opérateurs. Et pour faire ce travail-là, d'amélioration de la gouvernance, d'amélioration des capacités des opérateurs, on a besoin d'outils financiers spécifiques. Et, et, et je pense que ça a été dit aussi plusieurs fois, on a besoin de subventions et c'est là où les partenariats entre, par exemple, des institutions comme la mienne et l'Union européenne sont, sont vraiment importants parce que l'Union européenne peut apporter ce, ce type de ressources. Ce que je voulais dire également, c'est qu'au-delà du travail sur la gouvernance et si on en vient au sujet du, du secteur privé, je pense que c'est revenu plusieurs fois, euh, il, il, il est important que le secteur privé soit finalement accompagné à rentrer dans le secteur de l'eau qui a un certain nombre de caractéristiques financières euh, spécifiques donc euh, il y a besoin de dérisquer de garanties, il y a besoin oui. d'accompagnement, d'assistance technique pour par exemple les banques privées pour qu'elles saisissent mieux euh, quels sont les enjeux euh, dans ce secteur et là aussi je pense que euh, les bailleurs internationaux ont, euh, ont un, un, un rôle clé euh, à jouer le et, banque, et en fait, la, la Banque euh, européenne de l'investissement, par exemple, qui, qui pourrait aider dans, dans ce cas, non Par exemple, l'AFD propose aussi des garanties et l'AFD bénéficie aussi de garanties de l'Union européenne. Donc, je pense qu'il y a une nécessité de bonne coordination de tous les acteurs pour oui. mettre ensemble ces outils complémentaires qui vont nous permettre euh, bah, de, de répondre à la demande de financement par une, par une, offre, par une offre adaptée. Et peut-être un dernier point qui me semblait important de, de, de mentionner, c'est que euh, les, les institutions, enfin les bailleurs internationaux et des institutions comme l'Union européenne, je pense, sont aussi là pour faire la preuve que des modalités de financement innovantes peuvent, euh, peuvent fonctionner. Je pense par exemple au contrat à impact de développement, je pense aussi euh, à de nouvelles modalités de, de mettre en avant les services, euh, les services écosystémiques, les fonds de l'eau. Euh, donc, sur ce sujet-là, il est aussi vraiment important que, que, que les acteurs financiers internationaux se, se mobilisent. Euh, comment euh, intégrer ce concept de, de, de l'eau comme un droit humain euh, dans, dans, les, dans un programme. Est-ce que vous avez un, un, peut-être un, un exemple concret de, euh, avec votre agence Alors, on essaye bien évidemment d'intégrer les, les, les droits humains dans nos, dans nos programmes. Euh, les dimensions du, du, du droit humain à l'eau et à l'assainissement hein, sont largement reprises dans, dans l'ODD6, hein, euh, l'accessibilité, euh, euh, l'inclusivité, euh, euh, l'ensemble des critères, se, se, enfin, les critères se retrouvent en grande partie, euh, même je pense tous, dans, dans l'ODD6, donc euh, nous, nous y travaillons. Euh, nous travaillons à mettre en place en plus des infrastructures, des dispositifs sociaux qui vont permettre aux plus vulnérables d'avoir accès aux services. Euh, nous travaillons aussi sur les enjeux de, de participation. C'est peut-être les, les, plus, les plus difficiles à, à, à mettre en œuvre. Il s'agit d'informer, de, de consulter les populations. Ça, les, les, les bailleurs de fonds savent le faire puisque ça fait partie des, des safeguards, des diligences environnementales et sociales. Mais quand on parle, quand on va un petit peu plus loin dans ce qu'est la participation des populations et qu'on va vers de la de la co-décision, de la concertation. Là, je crois qu'il y a encore un, un chemin à parcourir. Euh, à à, à l'AFD, nous essayons, par exemple, euh, par un financement euh, pilote, euh, d'appuyer euh, la société civile euh, au Sénégal à, euh, à, à, à avoir un regard sur les politiques de l'eau et à plus de, de redevabilité. C'est un exemple que je peux vous donner. OK. Uh, Chantal Marinesen, uh, head of the uh, UN Environment, Sustainable and Natural Resources, uh, DG INPA, again at the European Commission. Uh, Chantal, uh, you've heard, I guess, uh, most of these discussions over the last four days. You've been involved. Um, can you sum things up? Do you, what potential, and if there's possibly, possibility to give a concrete example, what potential do you see uh, for uh, more... Um, uh, working together on achieving this uh, this idea of water for all. Well, I, th I think that um, we're taking a very different. Uh, well, we're building on an approach that we'd been developing um, over the past um, financial period. Uh, I think you've heard from it, if I understand, also from uh, from our Slovenian colleagues, the the Team Europe approach, which yeah. um, will. I understand also be embedded in, in the council conclusions. 
So the way we've been um, looking at the future programming has actually been by coming up with Team Europe um, proposals uh, where we would be linking up <clears throat> not only with our, our member states, but also with the international financial institutions and, uh, and what we call like-minded um, partners to, to work on, on different issues and, and water would be one of them. Um, I think we have to remember that water is now part of the Green Deal um, agenda that we have for uh, par our, par our future partnerships. So it's, it's really quite important um, and it should help us scale up even further the, 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 the financing that we're, we've been giving to, um, to, to the water sector, which despite everything we say, it's not been small um, over mm -hmm. the past period. We are talking about 2.6 billion euros that we have been investing in, in, in the water um, sector. Um, so it is in fact already one of the big sort of areas of our cooperation. But we think that thanks to the new agenda, um, the fact that it's, it's there as a self-standing issue, um, but it's also under the green cities agenda that's also becoming much more prominent in our in our programming um, and also I, I have to say here thanks to our member states um, and the negotiations that they've had on the uh, on the financial regulation that underpins the new um, financial period and the fact that they've included water and wash um, in the definition of of human development uh, we think that, you know, this is really going to, to help us um, scale up uh, the support that, that we can provide. Uh, Chantal, at, you know, at the beginning of this conference, we heard uh, the commissioner talking about this 100 billion euro gap every year. You mentioned 2.6 billion. That doesn't sound like a lot, but I can imagine that must be have a multiplier effect to draw others in and to expand that kind of investment, right? That's, that's obviously what we hope, and this is why we've got these new financial instruments that uh, Céline was um, uh, mentioning, uh, the, the fact that we've, we've established uh, what we call the EFSD um, plus um, under the new financial regulation to, to be able to support IFD, um, the EIB, uh, to provide guarantees. It's also why we, we do blended finance. Um, I think that we're not entirely satisfied with the leveraging effect that blended mm. finance has had over the past period, but it doesn't mean that, you know, we shouldn't continue um, to, to invest here. It's, it's true that we have um, grants and most of our, our cooperation is, is well, you know, it, it's it's grant based, and then it can be turned into to loans and and to right. guarantees, right. obviously. Um, so that's risk. That's like risk sharing, isn't it? So yeah, that you take a bit of the edge risky. off the risk, so that even the private sector and others are are more encouraged to get involved. Yes, that's that's the de-risking part of our hmm. um, uh, our portfolio, at least on the uh, support to to the private sector. Um, another way, of course, of de-risking is, is by helping our partners to uh, improve their, their policy environment. Um, mm -hmm. and, and here it's to, to look at the, the policies uh, and support policy reforms in, in countries. And this can be either done through technical assistance, but also the, the diplomacy and the political dialogue and the policy dialogue that we have with partner countries is um, is very important. Right. So this is this is kind of a key role that they where the EU can play in facilitating investment uh, like uh, what Celine's organization uh, would like to do. Right. You're 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 providing an extra sort of expertise and and uh, capacity to uh, to make that happen. Right. In this partnership. Yeah. But we would do it. We would do it with our member states. Okay. That's how we operate um, in country. Um, you know, if we're a lot of our, our future cooperation is going to be what we call, we've developed this lovely new word, geographized, which means that most of the, the financing will be at country level and regional level um, to get closer to the ground. Uh, and in country, we work with our member states. 
be it, you know, um, cooperation on, on programs. So we're, 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 um, uh, we're co-financing a, a program, but also when we go and talk to our partners, um, very often we do it together in a coordinated way. Can you give a concrete? Can, can you give a concrete example of that? For instance, maybe maybe Slovenia being very uh, big on this water issue, or another uh, 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 European uh, Union uh, country. How are they concretely getting involved in this? Well, it's, the first thing is that um, we work at the embassy level in country. Um, we we talk to each other, we develop um, common positions, uh, and and then we go out to talk to to the partners, to the different government institutions. You could you could think that um, if there's a ministry in charge of of water, but um, also the other ministries that mm -hmm. use water, like agriculture um, or the energy ministry, we would you know talk to them together. Mm -hmm. um, and we also use our different skill sets. So Slovenia has a specialization in, in water. They'll probably be the ones that will lead on it. Uh, it won't necessarily always be the European uh, delegation. So we take the lead on, on different subject matters in country, depending on who has the right skill set to do, to do what. Okay, Celine, uh, Celine yeah. Euh, Céline, voudriez-vous euh, élaborer là-dessus peut-être et peut-être que vous auriez une, euh, un exemple concret pour expliquer comment euh, euh, votre agence euh, travaille avec l'Union européenne, qui travaille avec des pays membres, euh, avec euh, un, un pays sur le terrain. Est-ce que vous avez un, un exemple peut-être concret? Euh, Céline, vous m'entendez? Oui, 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 il faut, il faut que j'active... Euh... Il faut que j'active mon, mon micro. Euh, on a, oui, on a beaucoup d'exemples de, 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 de travail commun euh, côté français. Donc, l'AFD, qui, qui est un opérateur de l'État, euh, agit sur la base de la stratégie du, du gouvernement français et, et fait des, des propositions à l'Union européenne, à leur représentation euh, locale, euh, d'opérations euh, qui rentrent également dans, dans sa stratégie. Euh, J'ai parlé cette semaine, par exemple, de, de ce projet que nous avons financé au Cambodge, où l'AFD a apporté une, une ligne de crédit euh, à, une, à une banque commerciale uh -huh. et, et, et l'Union européenne avait apporté la subvention qui, qui a permis de faire de ce projet un succès en appuyant, en apportant de l'assistance technique euh, à la fois à la banque et aux opérateurs privés qui montaient leur dossier de, de financement. Hmm. Euh, Donc c'est vraiment, pense... vraiment un, un travail d'équipe c'est un travail d'équipe et en grande complémentarité. Je, je pourrais penser également à des pays comme le Sénégal, où nous travaillons étroitement ensemble, y compris dans le dialogue sectoriel, où nous avons euh, cofinancé des, des prêts de politique publique et d'autres projets. Euh, donc, c'est un, un travail en équipe, en cherchant à, à utiliser au mieux euh, les, les forces de chaque, des outils financiers que peuvent proposer les, 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 les différents Actor. Uh, ben, you've been listening to this. Can you add maybe perhaps some uh, a concrete example where you see either the part the, the potential for this kind of a partnership team effort, um, or you see something happening on the ground? I think we talked about the Niger Basin for for as one example, didn't we? Are you there, Ben? Can you turn, Ben? Do you hear me? Uh, I think is yeah. Can you, Ben uh, Ampuma, can you turn on your mic? Uh, can you add to this at all about the team effort? Chris, uh, otherwise I can step in. Really? No. Okay. Go ahead, really, Ben. Uh, the, you're talking about it. Yeah, you're talking about a team effort. And uh, really, at the base, I would really look at it at the basic level, where, of course, at our session, we talked uh, the chart basing actually came in. But I'll focus also on the water basin, where it's pretty clear that uh, in all these, in terms of a transboundary uh, cooperation, you need all the uh, players to be on board. And indeed, we have to also look at it from the regional, the international, the basin level, the national, and even to the local level. 
at all levels, you need this kind of teamwork to be able to accomplish whatever that you want to do. It should not be static to a particular uh, you know, uh, uh, level. And it also permeates all issues, even in terms of financing, last we're talking about, also in terms of uh, actually coming out of uh, issues and uh, projects that will look at the, uh, the vulnerable within the society to ensure that uh, all these things uh, actually go on properly. Right, so uh, institutions, private sector, uh, governments involved in the team effort, but also NGOs able to uh, be in uh, more direct contact with people on the ground in a certain region to be able to tailor whatever project it is. Have, is there an example of that where you see NGOs playing an integral part in that, yes, in that team uh, effort? Yes, yeah, precisely. I'll take the example of Ghana where they've been playing a key role, especially in the areas of uh, sanitation. Of, obviously, we, we, we acknowledge that we are very low in terms of uh, achieving our sanitation targets. And indeed, they are playing a very key role now because the government actually acknowledges the fact that we need to bring them on board. And what they're doing now is to set up what we call uh, uh, local level teams in terms of bringing together the manufacturers, you know, uh, mm -hmm. sanitation practitioners, innovators, and artisans, you know, be them uh, carpenters, masons, you know, uh, uh, stuff like that, among others, and coming together as it were as a team to ensure that uh, from the beginning to the end, they deliver the service to uh, the population as it were. Where, so where do you see that? Like a, where do you see that working concretely on the ground, or do you see that yet? Uh, in, within the rural areas and also the peri-urban, where toilets and the toilet facilities are really lacking. That is where the focus really is on now. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, Pedro, coming back to you, uh, Pedro, uh, as this uh, uh, special rapporteur on human rights to safe drinking water and sanitation, how much does that hearten you? I mean, it's not just a question of investment, right? Filling this gap. It's a question of many other aspects that you are pushing from your side. Yes. Uh, there is a complex issue and for me is a, a mainly a democratic uh, um, challenge. I think, uh, of course, uh, we need and it's needed uh, funds, uh, uh, but uh, not only. Um, we are, I, I would like to, 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 pro, to, to offer you also a practical reference uh, is the Water Fund for Latin America is for us an initiative from Spain, just one country, two billion euros. Uh, and there are many cooperation projects based uh, not just on having money, but on the principles that the United Nations promotes uh, from a human rights perspective and, envir and environmental sustainability management, ma sustainable management. Uh, uh, basic issues, for instance, having uh, promoters, non-profit promoters, and above all, with counterpart based on the ground. The key for this, for, for this kind of projects for me is to, based, uh, to be based on, on uh, assuming gender mainstream, for instance, the empowerment of local institutions, both municipalities and communities, uh, and uh, uh, of course, uh, population participation, especially in impoverished communities. So uh, uh, we need money, we need economic means, but uh, to develop this money must be for developing not only the facilities, but also the democratic and participatory management of the services. Uh, in the end, uh, we need uh, citizen participation and responsibility, even in the most impoverished, especially in the most uh, impoverished and vulnerable communities. Okay, those are the broad strokes. That sounds like the policy speak. Can you give me something you saw on the ground? Can you tell me a story that would exemplify what you're talking about? Well, uh, for instance, uh, north, uh, northeast of Brazil, same extreme semi-arid regions where in a moment they say well let's go to with a big a huge uh, uh, transfer from the san francisco river and the people around said not we have another possibility uh, uh harvesting the, the the small rain we have 
let's go in a project one million uh, harvesting the uh, how do you say the poop en français je sais pas comment on dit uh, the lice system. it's lice yeah exactly okay. uh, so uh, on, on this uh, funds for uh, that that I had talk, talked uh, with uh, for Latin America the, the water funds uh, I don't know how much water, uh, money was devoted uh, but the main issue was uh, ten uh, thousand and thousand of people organized people organizing their own solution with the help of this international cooperation. Mm -hmm. And this is very solid because is their building capacity, their capacities in the, in the, on, on, on the territory. Uh, and uh, uh, this for me is a very, very good example. And now at present, uh, you have solved the problem for around 1 million uh, families in a uh, extreme semi-arid, semi-arid, uh, uh, under, uh, mm. under climate change. Right. So for me, this is the way, how, this is the way. How much hope do you have that you can multiply that to the nth power across the world? Sorry? How much hope do you have that you can multiply that, that case? Well, uh, from my point of view, uh, I insist uh, to multiply this, we need to change the general approach we are employing. <laughs> we have the experience of the COVID-19. Let us think on what is happening inside us and in the uh, public, uh, in, in the policy. Uh, I think we need to change towards a new approach for the main basic issues for the human being. And in this case, we are talking about basic human rights. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, we need to change uh, uh, towards the UN principles, and the UN principles are linked uh, to this sentence, this key issue that is in, uh, leaving no one behind, is for everybody, mm -hmm. is universal access, is transparency, is democracy, is participation. So uh, we need to change this, and in this sense, we need to uh, reinforce United Nations. We need to reinforce the United Nations. This is not a problem of business. It's a problem of re reinforcing global democracy with taking the, the human rights as the core of the global, uh, the global democratic governance that we need more and more in front of global challenges as, as the one we are living at present with the COVID-19. Now, by, by the way, you know, we, we hear now that the U.S. government is rejoining the climate, the Paris Climate Accord. We see that this year there's going to be, yes, there's going to be a, a U.N. conference on biodiversity in China later this year, where we hope to see a Paris-style agreement on biodiversity. Chantal, what about water? What about water? You, as being head of unit at Environment and Sustainable Natural Resources, are you going to be there? At the, in, at the biodiversity. Um, on the biodiversity, yes, we're definitely, we're following it. Um, we're supporting our, our colleagues in DG Environment who take the lead. Um, we do the outside uh, stuff on, on biodiversity and we take an integrated approach. Um, so we've proposed underneath the communication on the Green Deal, an initiative that's called Nature Africa to have a network of, uh, of protected areas and and high biodiversity landscapes, that includes water basins, right. that includes watersheds. Exactly. There's a link there, right? Yeah. Yes. And, and there's also a link to the, um, the Great Green Wall, um, or what we call the Green Sahel. I saw that there was a question in, in the chat about, you know, what about pastoral um, um, support, you know, to, to, to pastoral water? Well, that would be part of the, the, the Green Sahel. Um, this is, we want integrated approaches to, to um, restore landscapes. We can't do it without thinking about water. Um, so so do you think, but, but do you think water up to now has been kind of shortchanged here? I mean, we're, we're talking about the climate, we're talking about biodiversity, but who's really talking about so much about water? And maybe this conference could help to raise that, that issue. 
that's the idea. That's why we wanted to organize it with uh, with Slovenia was exactly to to be able to to raise the um, you know the issue. Uh, I think it has suffered um, in in the past. Funnily enough, probably because we created a, a water facility um, and sort of somehow took it out of the the mainstream programming. Now that doesn't that facility doesn't exist anymore. We've learned um, some very interesting les lessons, like working with uh, with water operators, which we think is something that we need to continue to do. I'd say that it also we need you know when we're working on sectors like like water, it needs to be fully integrated into the sort of the mainstream programming as we're doing at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to be looking at, uh, at all these different areas, biodiversity, climate change, food and nutrition, water, you know, wash, we need to take integrated approaches as well. Um, at, at a landscape level, we can't do them in silos. Otherwise, we're going to be spending probably more money on less things. Now, uh, Pedro, um, this is linked, of course, to U the UN uh, SDG Sustainable Development Goal 6. And those Sustainable Development Goals were supposed to reach by the turn of the decade, by, the, by 2030. We have uh, now less than nine years to get there, right? Um, how much hope do you have there? Are we going to have to move the goalposts back again? Well, I think, uh, of course, we're in the in the mean of the of the of the period. So it is is a is we are in the last occasion, the last time for reviewing our compromise and our commitment. I think we have uh, uh, the 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 United Nations, uh, the UN Water is proposing uh, five measures to accelerate uh, this SDG commitment in the six. Uh, but I want to remember everyone that uh, we are talking in this case, as the G6, of a human right. And human right is not uh, something that we can try to do, but is an obligation, is a legal obligation. But in any case, is a good moment for following perhaps or pay, paying attention to this, uh, to this proposal of uh, from United Nations in order to accelerate uh, this, 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 this commitment. And uh, I would like, excuse me, to, 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 to put, uh, uh, to, to make a comment on something important linking the human right to safe drinking water uh, with uh, climate change uh, transition, uh, climate change adaptation strategies. From my point of view, the main social impacts of climate change are linked to the water vector. And therefore, mm. the hydrological transition should be a key axis of the adaptation strategy in the same way that the strategy, the energy transition presides over mitigation strategies. This is why the Climate Adaptation Summit scheduled uh, next week, I think, uh, by the European Union can be crucial uh, in order to enrich uh, a European Union's adaptation strategy to be presented uh, in one month, I think so. Uh, mm -hmm. And I hope it will link uh, um, the, to the human rights to water and sanitation as the core of this strategy looking to reinforce a social and environmental resilience. Uh, Chantal, do you want to add any more about that uh, climate adaptation summit? Is it, uh, how soon is it coming? It, this is not one that I'm following, but we have, um, the, U, the UK has reached out to us on their, you know, because they'll be hosting the, the COP at the end of the year. Um, and, and what's really heartening for me is that we're seeing that nature is becoming really important um, for the climate change uh, summit. They, want, they really want to focus on nature-based um, solutions. Uh, they want to talk to us about forests, but it would, you know, it, it's water is also part of the conversation that we can um, that we can engage in. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, and what's interesting for us is also under the again our, under our financial regulation, we have a target to reach on climate change um, with regard to our to our financing against again you know thanks to the commission but also the member states that reinforced it 
So 30% 30 of our, um, our financing needs to be climate compatible and it covers all of our sectors. Mm -hmm. um, and that means that sectors that really do contribute also to, to climate mitigation and adaptation uh, um, get brought in to, to the programming much more. Uh, Lesha tells uh, us uh, through the chat that it is uh, the, the, the Climate Adaptation uh, Summit is on the 25th and 26th of January, that's next, next week, uh, that will be held by the Netherlands. So you can, uh, you can check that out uh, online. Um, uh, Céline, pour vous demander peut-être, quel est le prochain pas, alors, avec, euh, avec cette participation, avec votre agence euh, française du développement, est-ce que, euh, quel est le prochain pas pour votre organisation à promouvoir ce, ce partenariat euh, pour euh, développer de l'eau euh, pour euh, les gens euh, dans le monde? Alors, je ne sais pas s'il y a un prochain pas, parce que c'est vraiment une collaboration, euh, une collaboration continue. Euh, L'AFD euh, euh, travaille aujourd'hui avec, euh, avec l'Union européenne, euh, discute dans le cadre des, des Team Europe Initiative. Euh, il y a vraiment des débats euh, très, euh, très nourris euh, entre nous. Euh, donc mais mais c'est en tout cas pour, pour un, une institution euh, comme, comme l'AFD, une, euh, une très bonne nouvelle, quelque chose que nous regardons avec beaucoup d'intérêt, euh, que ce nouveau cadre budgétaire euh, arrive et qu'il laisse euh, de, de, de la place et laisse sa juste place à, à, à l'ensemble des secteurs environnementaux euh, comme, comme, comme l'eau. Et je dirais qu'ensuite, le, le prochain pas, c'est de continuer euh, au jour le jour, euh, les, avec les équipes sur place, euh, à échanger, à chercher des complémentarités, à, à monter euh, des opérations, à aussi porter des messages communs lors de ces événements internationaux que, voilà. sont, euh, que sont les COP, que sera aussi le Forum mondial de l'eau en, en 2022 à Dakar. Oui, euh, j'imagine voilà, que vous êtes, vous êtes, pré, vous êtes présente, euh, votre organisation, à, à ces, ces événements oui, oui, tout, oui, tout ouais. à fait, euh, en lien bien évidemment avec, euh, avec le gouvernement français, mais euh, euh, nous y sommes pour, pour promouvoir des solutions et promouvoir aussi des, 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 des approches. Euh, ce, que, ce que disait Chantal euh, par rapport à l'approche intégrée, c'est aussi quelque chose que, que nous souhaitons euh, mettre, euh, mettre en avant, cette approche territoriale qui, qui est bien évidemment euh, naturelle quand on s'intéresse à, à, à l'eau, puisque c'est l'échelle du, du bassin versant et qui nous pousse à, à voir plus large que le simple sujet de, de l'eau potable, mais à s'intéresser mm -hmm. aussi aux usages agricoles, ouais, et, 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 etc., etc. Exactement, c'est euh, comment lever ce, ce, ce profil d'eau euh, dans ces conférences, dans ces efforts de développement. Ce n'est pas toujours euh, facile, j'imagine. Non, ce n'est pas, pas toujours facile, mais je dirais que les arguments sont, sont là et ils oui. ont été amplement répétés pendant, pendant cette conférence, ce qui, ce qui est nécessaire, euh, les bénéfices économiques d'investir dans le domaine de l'eau sont, sont clairs, les bénéfices sociaux également sur sur les, les problématiques d'égalité femmes-hommes, sur la protection des, oui. des écosystèmes. Euh, on ne peut pas protéger euh, euh, la biodiversité sans, sans, sans assainissement. Voilà. Euh, donc, euh, donc euh, là encore, il, il faut continuer à donner de la visibilité à, à nos sujets et à, à, à pousser la mobilisation politique. Et je pense que nous avons tous les arguments pour cela. Et, et, et faire le lien entre la sécurité et l'eau, qu'on ne peut pas avoir... Euh, la sécurité euh, hydrologique, euh, euh, on ne peut pas avoir la sécurité sans, sans la sécurité de l'eau, non -ce pas enfin, Comme, comme j'ai mentionné au début de, de la conférence aujourd'hui, j'ai dit que j'étais en Somalie dans les années 90 et, et là, c'était ce conflit était lié à l'eau. Euh, et, et, la, et les gens qui, qui, qui souffraient. C'était non seulement euh, des guerres entre les guerriers, mais c'était aussi un manque d'eau. Et on le voit en, euh, on dit en, en Syrie, par exemple, aussi, c'est lié. Une question de sécurité, non Oui, et, et, et c'est d'ailleurs pour cela que des institutions comme la mienne, nous, nous travaillons beaucoup et depuis longtemps, 
euh, sur ces sujets-là de manière un petit peu indirecte, mais en, en appuyant le, la mise sur pied d'institutions de gestion des bassins transfrontaliers. Euh, euh, L'AFD travaille aux côtés, que ce soit de l'OMVS, euh, l'Office de mise en valeur euh, du fleuve Sénégal, euh, de l'ABN euh, pour le fleuve Niger, euh, le bassin du Nil, euh, ouais. de, depuis, euh, de, depuis très longtemps et ce, et ce sont des institutions qui, qui vont mettre autour de la table effectivement différents états pour, pour mieux répartir la ressource et tout cela, ça contribue à, à atténuer des, des, des tensions euh, qui pourraient exister d'un point de vue géopolitique. Exactement. Ben, if you can hear me, uh, Ben, can you give us a bit more of the so what, the urgency Uh, as we wrap this up in the next uh, 10 minutes before the final comments, um, how urgent is this that we solve this water problem, that we try to reach uh, that sustainable, sustainable Development Goal 6 as soon as we can, hopefully by 2030, but at least as soon as we can? Uh, can you give us a bit of so what and sense of urgency to what you see on the ground and that, and that there is that link? If you don't have water security, you don't have security, right? Yeah, precisely so. If you don't have water security, you don't have security and you don't have peace. And that is why the stakes are quite high for peace and trust built on water cooperation. That is what I think we should be taking back home. The stakes are pretty quite high. And for that matter, the, our water agenda be it at the national level, the international level, should really prioritize transboundary cooperation, focusing on issues and measures that will improve key uh, water governance. The issue of water governance is fundamental and very basic, that if we want to uh, achieve water security at the end of the day and also achieve our SDGs, then we need to improve water governance. We need to build partnerships and also how to support infrastructure that would reduce the element of conflict and rather promote benefit sharing at the international, bilateral, regional, and also national level. I might also quickly say that uh, we need to look at the issues of building peace, uh, peace building in terms of initiatives, uh, respect to the wash sector and also water resources management that again, targeting the vulnerable within our societies. We can do all that we want, but if we don't prove the livelihoods of our people who depend so much on the water at the local level, then uh, we cannot achieve uh, the peace and trust that we, uh, we need. That is quite critical. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ben. Uh, Chantal, can you uh, inject a bit of sense of urgency here uh, as well? We're going to be hearing from uh, the uh, Slovenian uh, representation uh, momentarily, and they're going to be taking over the rotating uh, EU uh, Council presidency uh, in mid-year. It's a good to get started now to talk about the urgency of water. Is that they want to they want to make a push on that? Can you give us a sense of urgency about solving this water issue, helping moving forward and developing uh, water around the world? Uh, there's something in it for everybody, including for the EU. Um. Well, we're, I, I don't know about sense of urgency. I mean, it's urgent. That's that's for sure. And uh, what Pedro was was saying that we need to um, support this acceleration program of of the UN. Um, I'm really hoping that we will be able to be to be one of the partners. But we're in the middle of our programming um, phase at the moment. It's going to take us another six months. I'd say um, also to to the colleagues around the table. Um, that, that there may be our next steps that can, you know, get us um, to where we want to go. Uh, we need to, to obviously continue our work with uh, the IFD and uh, other member states, um, Slovenia, um, on the ground to, to make sure that we're presenting um, good proposals on, on water, integrated proposals. Uh, I think that all the work that we're going to be doing with uh, Slovenia Um, prior to them presenting the council conclusions to the member states in, in council um, for discussion, that will help us move forward. That's a really important um, project that we, we need to be working on all together. 
um, because it will also then feed into the programming um, exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's what I, anyway what I would be hoping. So I don't know if I'm presenting it well enough to say you know to, to show how urgent it is. We know it is. We've got our our procedures to follow. Um, linking water to to peace and security is certainly a really good way um, to push the the file forward. And I think that. The, the, the Sahel, um, the, the Great Green Wall that France has been pushing all of us to, to collaborate around is one of the ways that we can, we can really move forward also on this uh, integrated approach, including water in, in, in that agenda. And then we really will be hitting a lot of the targets that we want to, to achieve. The Great Green Wall, Céline, pourriez-vous élaborer un peu là-dessus comment c'est important pour le gouvernement français et c'est lié à la sécurité, n'est-ce pas Je, je, je sais que c'est très important et que des, des engagements forts ont été pris, euh, ont été pris sur, sur, sur ce sujet. Euh, ce n'est pas un sujet que, que je, dont je m'occupe directement, donc je, je ne pourrais pas vous en dire plus, mais je, bien évidemment que dans ce sujet-là, il y a une accroche pour, pour parler de l'eau, puisque ce, tout, tout, toute cette initiative ne, ne sera possible qu'en mobilisant et en protégeant une ressource en eau suffisante. Mais bien sûr, le, ce, 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 lien entre, ce lien entre la sécurité et la sécurité d'eau, euh, on ne peut pas le séparer, n'est-ce pas Peut-être que je peux aider, euh, oui. parce que j'ai dû suivre beaucoup plus à cause des collègues de, de Céline, mais c'est une approche vraiment au niveau euh, local, avec les autorités locales, avec la population. Euh, c'est développer des approches paysages pour restaurer des paysages actifs, euh, des « working landscapes euh, », autour de l'agriculture, mais aussi autour de l'agroforesterie ou, ou du pastoralisme qui a été mentionné euh, par mm -hmm. un, un des participants ou une des participantes plutôt. Et, et l'eau doit absolument faire partie de ce genre de programme intégré euh, et qui est euh, « owned euh, », approprié par euh, les autorités locales et, euh, et, et les populations qui, qui en dépendent. Et là, on voit dans des pays comme, comme l'Éthiopie, le Sénégal, le Niger, le, le, vraiment l'apport de ce genre de, de programme peut avoir au, au Niger sur la paix, sur, sur la sécurité. On voit où on peut arriver avec l'Éthiopie, où ils sont, on, la famine qu'ils ont subie en, dans les années 80, et puis maintenant, ils ont complètement restauré des, des paysages. Ils, ils ont intégré l'eau là-dedans. Il, il y a des petites structures euh, aquifères qui ont été intégrées mm -hmm. avec l'agriculture. Et, et le paysage a complètement changé. C'est vraiment impressionnant. Et la, mm -hmm. la vie euh, des, des communautés aussi. Et on espère pouvoir justement... Euh, faire la même chose dans tous les autres pays du Sénégal euh, jusqu'à l'Éthiopie euh, euh, et, et tous ces pays sahéliens. Oui, donc, donc il y a de, de l'espoir là. Uh, Pedro, I guess final word before we go to the, the, the final comments. Um, how much does that give you hope? Um, and do you have any goals over the next, say, five years of developing water around the world as uh, the UN Special Rapporteur? Yes, of course, I have a lot of concerns and I am uh, building for my first, my two first thematic reports uh, before the, 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 the Council, the Human Rights Council in Geneva in September and the one, another one before the, 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 the General Assembly of the United Nations. The first one will be uh, uh, analyzing the context of the, the context in which I have to work in my mandate and the, building my planning for the whole mandate is that I say I usually present in a sort of uh, provocation also uh, talking about the this crisis this uh, uh, cri global crisis as uh, uh, tragic as paradoxical is uh, the, the the world the water crisis 
in the water world, the the blue the blue uh, the, the water planet, the blue planet. You know, uh, so uh, this will be one of my uh, uh, of my reports, and the other one, I'm extremely extremely concerned uh, after knowing that the water enter in uh, to trade in the uh, future. Uh, um, in the future markets uh, in Wall Street, uh, as they, as people say, or some people say in this surrounding, uh, because water is just a commodity, just as petrol. And, uh, but we have not the human right to the petrol, and we have the human right to water. So I'm extremely concerned uh, with the background we have be behind, with the experience in this uh, uh, intensively um, um, prone markets to the prone to the to the speculation, big speculation under the experience we have with with food, for instance, with speculation in food. So these uh, are concerns that inspired the beginning of my of, of this mandate. And I, I would like to 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 say also that uh, I am launching also uh, some a very concrete question that perhaps the European Union could take in hands and, and clarify. If we have, we're talking about human rights uh, on to water and sanitation, it is necessary to precise the minimum vital amount of water uh, we need to respect for the most vulnerable people. And we have to, uh, to, uh, to have rules and laws in order to, 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 to assure the prohibition of cutting water to vulnerable and impoverished uh, families and people, and more at present with the COVID-19. So it's a very concrete question, and it's so, so difficult to get a concrete uh, legislation on this topic. And it's not so difficult. Colombia has done it. And Colombia is not a rich country. Mm -hmm. And the Supreme Court said, look, we cannot cut water at least 50 liters per person per day in Colombia is a human right. So we, we have to do it in Europe. And finally, I think uh, the global south is not so far from us. Uh, we have the global south inside the rich north, uh, uh, glo the global north. No? And so we have to, to, to talk about uh, refugee camps, slums in big cities, and uh, something that comes very quickly is millions of climate migrants uh, to these slums and cities uh, in the developed countries. Uh, and we, I am very, very really concerned about it. And they prepare works and uh, specific reports on these issues. Pedro Arroyo Agudo, mi, muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Special rapporteur on human rights to safe drinking water and sanitation. Thank you so much. And thanks to uh, the entire panel for all your comments wrapping up uh, today. And uh, this has been quite a productive last four days. Water and beyond, so many interconnected uh, issues as we even see here. Uh, we have been developing all those ideas. And now we want to look ahead because we're going to be talking now to and having some final comments from uh, Anna Novak. Anna Novak, who is the, uh, perm has the permanent uh, representation of Slovenia to the EU, uh, the, the Slovenia having the rotating uh, EU Council presidency uh, starting in mid-year. So it looks like we're sort of laying the groundwork uh, for that. It's good to raise and sensitize, uh, raise the issue and sensitize people on this issue. Anna, please, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Chris. And uh, well, first of all, I would like to say that the past four years have really brought about very interesting and useful debates and insights. So allow me to thank again the DG INPA for organizing this event and also for inviting Slovenia to co-host it. I would also like to thank DG ECO and of course the Portuguese presidency and but foremost the partners who worked hard to prepare these panels. With your excellent expertise, you have made the discussions relevant and to the point. The impressive participation of this event proves that it was worth every effort. Uh, so as you have heard from previous Slovenian speakers, I come from a country where water is relatively visible. 
We often talk about it and it is included in our constitution, but also deeply embedded in our culture. In fact, I cannot think of a Slovenian poet that has not written a poem featuring water in a prominent, if not a leading role. So therefore, putting water as a priority for the Slovenian presidency for the second half of this year was basically quite a natural decision. So with this seminar, we as the incoming presidency are starting a process. We will be building on the discussions and results of the past four days. In the next steps, together with the commission, we will organize two technical seminars with the member states. We also plan to hold a dialogue with stakeholders, notably with the private sector and with the civil society, and we will cooperate with the European Parliament as well. So as you have heard before in the discussions and in, in the wrapping up and in the last panel, the Slovenian presidency will be guided by the ambition to embed water systematically and comprehensively in the EU external action and doing that, including by highlighting the triple nexus, the humanitarian development and peace nexus. Besides striving to strengthen the role of the EU in the global water landscape, we will do our utmost to formulate and adopt a unified EU27 position. So let me conclude with assurance that Slovenia is well aware of the need to combine the two approaches embedded in the Agenda 2030, to mainstream water and at the same time to make sure that it receives adequate attention also as an issue in its own right. The new instrument and the new programming cycle, including the Team Europe initiatives, provide an excellent opportunity to do so. So thank you again for your valuable contributions. I'm looking forward to our future cooperation. Thank you and over to you, Chris. Thank you, Anna. Anna Novak, the permanent representation of Slovenia to the EU. Uh, thank you so much. And I would like to, before I uh, leave, I would like to thank everyone as well, all the, uh, the organizers, uh, the, the commission, the NGOs, uh, the, the technicians who are in this big room, if you could only see how busy they've been in providing this support. I'm not all alone. There's a huge team here. So now uh, we are going to uh, move uh, to the final comments uh, by uh, Carla Montesi, uh, Director for Green Deal and Digital Agenda at DG International Partnerships, DG INPA at the European Commission. Carla, it's nice to see you again. We've uh, worked together on uh, other events. <laughs> Absolutely. Many, many thanks, uh, Chris, and uh, really congratulations for your moderation. It's uh, always very difficult to, to moderate uh, oh. such ambitious panel, but uh, also in virtually you did uh, a wonderful, uh, well, good job. It's, it's a pleasure with all the panelists, and, and, and also we, we must pay tribute to all the other moderators as well. It's been a real team effort. Yes, absolutely. So let me start, uh, Chris, thanking really all the participants, all my contribution to all the participants, all the speakers, all the organizers, because it was a really a fruitful discussion. I was not able to stay there during the three days, but I jump sometimes to, to follow the different discussion, and I'm very proud of all the discussion that were taking place. So let me say thank you for this very enriching debate. Thank you, uh, government of Slovenia for causing, uh, you have just said this event with us. Uh, we were able to count also on the support uh, on the organization all the process of, of this event and also thank you very much to the government of the portugal that has actually the, the eu presidency for joining us in this important discussion so uh, i think i need to thank also all our partners that help us you know, in organizing, co-organizing uh, this event. Of course, I will not mention all, but let me mention Waterhead, Women for Water Partnership, UNICE, UNESCO, Border. I think that without their support, uh, the, this event would have not been uh, possible. And as Chris, you mentioned, I think I want really deserve a big thanks to my team and to all 
of tools that are with you uh, in the backstage that have been preparing this event and work really very, very hard to make this event uh, possible. Now, it's very difficult for me to take the conclusion. I was just listening to the last panel in a more detailed way. But uh, clearly, these four days uh, were a great possibility to recall, to clearly put on the table the critical importance of water for the world and for us, for our people, for our planet, for our jobs, for peace. And uh, this is very clear that water is clearly important for all the priorities that we have in our international partnership. Uh, during these days, uh, we have looked at the best practice, to the right approaches, to the innovation, and this, all these debates uh, clearly will help us in defining, in better defining our future intervention and also uh, will allow us in some way to align uh, the intervention of uh, the different uh, actors uh, between, between them, between us. So um, clearly, very, very useful discussion. Um, I can add that clearly all agreed that water has become one of the strategic assets of the 21st century, one of the most important global challenges that we have uh, at our time. Of course, I will not repeat, but water is at the heart of the Green Deal. Uh, we have clearly heard by the different panelists and the participants how water is clearly related to climate, to food system, to human rights, to health and education, to sustainability, to peace and the security. We have just seen how water is and was and is important just to face this pandemic, COVID pandemic crisis that we are all dealing. So it, it's the link with all these policies are very, very important. And I think that once this link it's very uh, well established, will help also us to put in the table of the different summits that characterize uh, this year, the 2021 um, this, this year. So during this day, we heard about the policies. Uh, we heard about the financing challenging, of course, the water financing gap. We heard the holes about many concrete initiatives at the political level, but also at the private sector level, at the civil society level, uh, regarding financing and regarding also knowledge. So solutions are clear there, and now it's really the time to leverage this solution and to put uh, on the table. It was also a great moment to discuss the challenges. And of course, the challenges are many, and I will not repeat all, but I would like just to underline one. And he's ensuring the consistency of the approach. Uh, I think at the level of the uh, international institutions, at the level of government, at the level of regions, we have to succeed to avoid that different government ministries or different stakeholders deal with this subject sometime in silos. The key word for me is the integrated approach. So we will succeed on dealing on water only if we succeed really to put the water area inside in an integrated way uh, to face all the big challenges that I just uh, recalled that we have in front of us. So this is for me the, the, the key challenges that we all have government, international organization, civil society, and we all need to tackle and to avoid to work on silos. Now, what is the next, just to conclude our this brilliant seminar, I think that we all agree that there is clear necessary that we 
speed up that we scaling up our efforts you have listening just Chantal repeating once again uh, after our commissioner uh, our director general at the beginning of this session that it's very important uh, that we'll scaling up our effort the European Union is fully engaged uh, in doing this we have just listened I think that what is really necessary that we all adopt a more systematic approach, uh, allowing us to look at all the different aspects of uh, water and succeeding in uh, interlinking in, in their, uh, succeed in taking all the priorities, succeed on the interlinkage between and within all the, the, the big priorities. This is clearly a must that we need to ensure at the European level, but we need also to ensure in all the key stakeholders. So we really want to engage in our partnership with government, with the civil society, with the private sector, mobilizing all the stakeholders in order to achieve this scaling up of, of this issue. I think during that the debate, you have also seen that we have had the opportunity to launch uh, two major initiatives. Uh, I want to mention once again, because my side are very important. One is the initiative uh, that uh, um, uh, link to our financing. Uh, we have just signed a new contract uh, with FMO. It's about uh, finance. It's the Climate Investor 2, uh, about almost 20 million. I want to mention this because it's crucial now that when we work about this sector, we are not mentioning just the technical assistance. We are not mentioning just all our common work on government, but on governance, but it's what I want to underline that it's really very, very important that we succeed to mobilize the private sector and all the financial institutions to work into investment in the water, sanitation, ocean infrastructure. It's very, very important. So this first project that uh, we succeeded to, to sign, uh, we uh, allow us to leverage up of 2 billion investments uh, into this subject. So it's a very, very important, and I'm mentioning it because today water is not more, anymore just a subject for the governance, it's a subject for the governance, but also for the investment. It's very, very important. Financial institution, private sector need to be with us in, in, in facing these challenges. The second project that I would like to mention is just the framework of 9 million program that we have financed um, with AU. You have listening, the UN Habitat. We launched this week an important call for proposal for water operators. I think it's important too. I would like to mention uh, this contribution because it's also a great step towards an improved investment climate for the water infrastructure. Uh, so I, I limited myself to mention these two because they are an important step forward also in our way to work in this important, important sector. So uh, let me hand saying that, of course, really we intend as European Union to continue the cooperation with European, non-European stakeholders involved in the, in the water sector really to share the best practice, to promote the best regulatory govern, uh, convergence in the water sector, to improve the water governance, to mobilize investment once again. And just a last call to our member states, to member states of the European Union, because you have listened during this three days that clearly we want to work, Chantal just mentioned once again, that really we want to work in implementing our next seven year financial instrument together with the member states through the Team Europe uh, initiative. There are huge promising opportunities uh, to collaborate in a near, a strong way with our member states, with our partners, with the private sector, the European private sector, with the European financial institutions. I want to underline this because today what we need is also 
huge new initiative that we clearly have an impact uh, uh, in our partnership with uh, the different uh, uh, country in, in the world. Uh, I think uh, only if we succeed to work together, we clearly will succeed to make a decisive contribution to SDG 6 and to achieve a world that will be more equitable and more sustainable in which water will have clearly a key uh, play, uh, a key uh, role. So, Chris, I think that you, you just mentioned your last word, a sense of uh, urgency. I think that the sense of urgency is clearly there. It was done during this day. Uh, my main message is, of course, water is an important key elements in all our big challenges that we will have in front of us. Uh, to uh, just uh, ending, I would like to reiterate that this year will be the year of high level summit. Uh, you mentioned already the uh, summit on biodiversity, the summit on climate change, the summit on food system, the summit on nutrition, the summit on health, and all these summits, they will have a point that is in common, is the water sector. So this is why it's so important that we tackle this water sector in a really integrated way, has to be on the table of IOP wonderful, important, successful conclusion of all this summit that we will have in front of us. So let clearly to continue to work together, to pull our effort in order to put water at the heart of our partnership. I'm quite sure that I can count on all our um, uh, partners around the world, being governments, being civil society, be, being um, UN organization. So many, many thanks once again for having contributed at this incredible and very useful uh, session and, and the seminar. And let me say once again, thank you to all the team. Thank you, Chris, and all the moderator. And uh, I hope to see you very soon in all the other debates that we have in front of us. Many thanks, Chris, and uh, all. Thank you so much, Carla Montesi, Director of uh, Green Deal and Digital Agenda at the DG uh, International Partnerships, DG INTPA, that used to be DEVCO, but that is completely justified, international partnerships, because that's what we've been talking about these last four days. Great calls to action by Carla. In fact, you probably want to hashtag some of those, hashtag water and beyond, and that is why we called these four days water and beyond. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for sending in your Q&A. That was great to have you as a part and, and to do the Slido polls. It was really great and we'll see you next time. Thanks so much.